Listen, the audio in this recording is trash, but I had to make this thing last minute and it's still a great tutorial. So, you know, kind of <laughs> deal with it. Hey everybody and welcome to day eight of November where I'm in a different location, which doesn't matter to you and also doesn't matter to me. The prompt for day eight is cooking. Let's do some procedural modeling and have a cheese and a cheese grater. <laughs> great the cheese and also make cheese particles. Okay, you know the drill. Make it a geonodes object. And to make this a cheese wedge, I'm actually going to start with an arc. And you're thinking, what the fuck is Tom going about? Why, why an arc? If we use this connect to center, you can see that it creates this Pac-Man shape. But if we invert the arc, now you get this pie wedge. Make it a mesh by filling it. And to give it thickness, we're going to extrude it. However, there's actually nothing on the bottom here, which we know how to fix, right? We flip spacers so that the normals are oriented. We join this together. And finally, to get rid of overlapping vertices, we merge. I'm going to rotate it by... 315 is 45 off of 360. So if I take 45 and divide it by two, it should be perfectly symmetrical. And now I want to put those like cheesy beer holes in it. And you might think the way to do that is to basically distribute a bunch of spheres and then like cut out using a mesh boolean. It would work. However, that's very computationally expensive. Instead, I'm going to do this by actually doing this directly in geometry. Instead of just this kind of like low res version, I'm going to do a mesh to volume and then I'm going to convert it back to a mesh. Very strange operation. And now we have basically voxelized in some sense geometry. I can increase that by bringing up the voxel count. So now if we distribute a bunch of points on this, we can actually say, look at your nearest neighbor and then pull or extrude inward. In other words, we are going to distribute points on faces. I'm going to use set position because we want to modify the position in which direction along the normal. We can rein that back in using a vector math scale, which definitely becomes a bit glitchy if we kind of go too far. That's going to be the proximity to these points to make sure that this is set to points, connect the distance to the scale. And you can see it's doing something now kind of looks like a asteroid. Okay, so obviously this looks extreme, so I'm going to bring this back in using a subtraction. First thing to clean this up is we're going to hit clamp, and this is going to make sure we're not using negative value, which is going to make this a lot easier. And if I bring this into a smaller number, you can see we get these kind of cones. What we need to do is we need to invert these, so I'm going to multiply by negative one. However, it's doing this linearly, and I want this to be more like round. And the easiest way I can think of is you're going to use a color ramp, and then literally all you need to do is uh, change the interpolation to cardinal, which I believe uses a spherical kind of profile. And we can also modify the uh, contrast of this. I can change the uh, number of dots here, how much it's eating into it. And to clean up this geometry further is I'm going to make this shade smooth. After we set position, we can set position again to itself, but this time I'm going to blur this uh, position field, which you can see already smooths this out a ton. And for now, I'm going to go with something like this. We can always change it later. Next, we need to grate this cheese. So I'm going to make kind of our cheese grater. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. And very importantly, we're not going to bring the grate towards the cheese, but instead we're going to bring the cheese towards the grate. And the reason I'm doing that is it's going to make our calculation for the motion of this uh, substantially easier. So for now, we can approximate our grates with a grid. I want to make sure that it is in the right direction, so like perpendicular. And to get this to kind of move up and down correctly, like uh, this, I'm just going to basically use a, a noise function for this. So make it one dimensional so it's not as much of a field. We can connect that here. If it's three dimensional, you're going to see it's not going to work. So make sure it's one dimensional. I'm going to use the frame number and make sure that it's going slower by like dividing by 10, which is moving it pretty quickly. So we'll make it 100 times. Another thing is you can see this isn't really centered. It's almost like centered at 0.5. So we need to center this. So subtract by 0.5. We can literally scale down our you know size of this effect by 50%. So now it's going to look less crazy. And I think I want it to go faster now. Now to give this a bit of visual interest, I'm also going to like rotate it a little, which we can achieve by basically plugging this in directly. And to make sure it's kind of oriented correctly, uh, we had it rotated by 90 degrees on the y-axis, which is pi over 2, but only on the y-axis. So now it's going to even like rotate a little. And I'm also going to constrain this on the x-axis. So it doesn't kind of move like forwards and back. So for the translation, I can multiply by 1 on the y and z and then 0 on the x. So all of this is going to be our great uh, node group, which honestly to me is kind of given like a dark gray slash blackish vibe. Control G to make it a node network. And of course, cheese gives us a yellowish orange kind of eye. And now I want to bring the cheese in this direction and make it kind of like disappear as it goes through the grate. So to do that, I'm going to transform our cheese along the x-axis. And I can do this as a function of time. And it's just going to zoot away. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to divide by, first of all, negative. So it goes in the other direction and then a larger number so that it goes much slower. And then for the y and z axis, I think we can also add a bit of randomness as well using a noise texture, one dimensional animated over time. And I just want to make sure this isn't varying on the x-axis again. And also, 
make sure that it is centered. Okay, so now this looks like there's a bit more like motion and stuff going on, but our first order of business is kind of calculating what part of the cheese has gone through our plane, which isn't as easy as saying like where X is bigger than zero, because again, sometimes our plane is slanted, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. So we're gonna need to do this calculation on the fly. Okay, so what I want is I want an attribute that we're gonna reference in shading, because I'm just gonna make that part transparent that tells us what part has been like hit or kind of passed through the grader. And initially that's gonna be equal to zero. And then to check which parts are like affected or hit, all we need to do is we need to look at the proximity to our grader. And then if it's very close to it, we can say that it's been hit. In other words, we're gonna take geometry proximity to our cutting plane. And under the condition that this distance is less than some like super tiny number like 0.01, under that condition, we wanna take this number and we want to make sure to take its initial value. And I'm going to add one. So the way you wanna think about this is initially every point hasn't been hit, but as we kind of go through this, some of the points will be hit and then they will maintain that value. And then we're just gonna add one. I'm like trying to think if I'm crazy, but like nothing explains this. Okay, so I was playing the simulation and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why the thing wasn't moving. I'm like, something's wrong with Blender. I literally <laughs> reinstalled it because I couldn't conceive that I did something wrong. Is we have our like movement, but then when we run it through simulation notes, it goes on the first frame and then it just kind of like sends it back to itself over and over. In other words, it's not going to update our animation. So somehow we need to take this like movement from before and include it in here. Here is a, a bit of a hack to do this. On every frame, I'm going to update its position. So I literally just sample using this geometry and then using the index as the index, because of course the indices don't change here, like everything stays the same. And then I just need to bring over the position. If I connect this to position, let's see now. Yes, the cheese is moving and more so, more so, I'm going to visualize our geometry. And you can see that it is actually working. Let's go, boys. Although you're going to see that it's actually skipping some parts. And that's because we're not doing enough frames. Like we should have this go slower. But because I don't want to do that, we're also going to need a workaround. This is the tutorial of workaround. So all I need to do is I'm going to blur this attribute. Why am I doing that? Well, now you can see that this part is gray instead of just pure black. And then if I filter this through a greater than zero, which will capture these like missing parts, you can see before after and everything is splendid. By the way, make sure to like overwrite your uh, hit attribute. That's material for both of these. One of them is going to be called cheese. <laughs> and the other one is going to be called metal. Give it a cheese material, metal, give it a metal material. So you can see our cheese material is working. Bring in our hit attribute. So here you can see this is where it is and it's updating. I want to take this and use it as an alpha map, except now you can see it's giving us the inverse of what we want. Just going to take this and invert it. And you can see we have this issue where the grader is like slightly behind where it should be. And that's fine because we can either like animate this grader to be a bit forward because again, the simulation is baked or uh, we can make this thing thicker. Before we do that, I'm just going to add a bit of a uh, environment, a bit of a sky texture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of thickness. So extrude mesh until it's slightly past where our cheese is disappearing. So now you can see it doesn't look like the cheese is floating. And again, we're going to need to make sure this has a, a backside. Flip the faces, join them together, and then merge by distance. Or one of the last things I need to do is give this a metallic material and kind of create the cheese grader holes because this would be kind of a pain uh, to do in geometry nodes. Some good old classic shading trick. For the metal, make sure that it's metallic and kind of like a low roughness. So, you know, kind of looks like a metal. Another thing you can do is in specular, you can bring up this anastropic, which you can see does something to it. And if we take our tangent and just plug in tangent, if we use anything other than Z like X or maybe uh, if you use X, you kind of get this like rotational map, kind of like the bottom of a frying pan. You can decide whether or not you want that. But I think, you know, I like it, so I'm going to keep it. And now how do we add these holes actually in shading? Of course, we need to make a coordinate system. So inside our cutter node group, I want to make sure it's a store named attribute. I'm going to call this hold. And this is going going to store the vector of position. Why am I doing it here? Well, the position should be stored before we like move it at all because then the position changes. So now if I go to my attribute and I type in hold, you can see it kind of gives us a position pass. Great. <laughs> and here's a old trick you might remember. We can take vector math and scale it by let's say 10. If I then send it through fraction, it's going to give us a repeated thing. And then if I take the distance from the center of each of these, so the distance from 0.5 on the X and Y, you can see we get these circles and you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm just going to check where this is greater uh, than a certain number, which isn't going to be perfect, right? There's going to be these like gaps in between. And even we can kind of create a bit of a normal map so that there's a bit of height leading up to this. What I can do is I can make kind of a color ramp here, which I'm going to invert so that the middle is kind of the highest point. And then I'm just going to bring that in until we get these faded circles. And then we take this and process it through a bump height 
make that the normal map. Okay, there we go. So we get the same thing as before uh, with a bit of build up. So here's before and after. And also something you might consider is in subsurface. I'm going to bring up the scale of our subsurface. And if we increase a bit of weight, it's going to have kind of this like light passing through it property. And this as well should get a bit of normal mapping. And then for the height, I'm just going to use a noise texture. Oh, okay. oh, so we got most of our effects, except for one thing. We don't have the uh, particles falling down. And what we need is not only like a particle system with physics, which we know how to do, but we also need to know like where the particles should be emitting from, which should be this uh, cross section. Now, I believe we can actually calculate it exactly. By the way, before we fix that just an aesthetic thing instead of a grid we could swap this out with anything right so i'm just going to make a, a mesh circle swap that in here which i can make smaller now for the particles how are we going to know what the cross section of this is without actually calculating it well here's a clever trick i just thought of notice that this cheese is going in a single direction in other words it's pretty easy to kind of account for what if we only looked at the section that was already past the grader and what we did with this is we kind of compressed it so that it's like on this like z and y plane so after we do our simulation output delete the geometry that hasn't been hit, I can look at our named attribute. And when we view this, you can see it kind of gets rid of the uh, section that we don't like. First of all, we are going to uh, invert it. So this is the uh, part that, you know, passes through and we scale X is equal to zero. And now this is almost giving us the uh, cross section as we go through. I cannot believe that that is actually a sensical way of doing things. By the way, I'm going to merge by distance just to get rid of some geometry. And now we're only getting points where the cross section is. And if we give these particles physics, I think that should be everything. So so I'm just going to take what we did here and make that its own node group. And we should do this calculation inside the simulation zone. I'm going to plug this in here. So it's doing our calculations. And now if I make a second socket for this and then re-simulate, we should be able to see our cheese and then also a simulation zone version of this thing. I'm just going to make our merge by distance kind of like tinier threshold so it doesn't really get rid of all our mesh. Again, we are going to distribute points on faces relative to this geometry. We want to change this basically on every single frame. We're going to take these points and make them its own socket and then for every single frame where we have points, I want to bring in the previous ones and join them with the new ones. So I basically want them to have gravity and shoot outwards a little. I'm going to store named attribute. This one's going to be called A for acceleration. You've seen this a million times already. I've done this on every tutorial. We're going to have an acceleration and a velocity. The velocity is going to be equal to itself. So we are going to add the component of acceleration on every single frame. And on every single frame, our velocity is going to gain a bit of negative Z component. So it's going to fall. And we can move these points by setting position by this updated velocity. So we want to also join our points here. And if I bring up our density, what we should see, let's click play, is yes, we're generating points exactly where the cheese is. And it's kind of growing in this uh, cross section. One more thing I want to do is I want to make sure these points kind of shoot outward. And to do that, they need to have a initial velocity. In other words, when they're spawned, we can uh, assign a velocity. And that is going to be a little on the X component. And great, now they are shooting out kind of all at the same speed. And there's too many of them. So I'm just going to make a random vector. I'm going to do a negative X component as we talked about. So from like negative 0.06 to like negative 0.01 maybe. And then we can also vary this a little on the uh, Y axis. Okay, I didn't notice that this is one on the Z. That's why they're shooting outward. Okay, so there we go. So we have our cheese going through and it is generating nice little particles, which can be kind of like their own instances, right? And because they're like shredded cheese, it can be the shape of shredded cheese. Basically, I guess just a uh, grid shape. Now, you could argue because these are like circular sections, these should be like circular pieces. I'm going to make these more like rectangles. And then I also want to randomize these scale here. I guess they wouldn't be like a random rotation because they would be kind of facing this way. So let's see what we can do. We're going to put in a rotation. We're going to make it random. And honestly, I think this looks fine. Which, does that look realistic? Uh, I don't really know. But there's only so much we can do, boys. Finally, I think the only thing I'm going to change is, again, more particles. And I'm going to make them look a bit smaller. So we did it. As always, you can get the blend file in the description. 30 blend files for every day of November. Thank you to everybody joining the Patreon, by the way. I'm getting a flood, an influx. Uh, anyways, See you tomorrow. Prompt for tomorrow is, I don't remember. I don't know.